Good day everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a vector quantity. When we say vector quantity, these are quantities that has magnitude and direction. In magnitude, these are values and direction, it talks about uh, where does this uh, quantity goes. Let's say we have a velocity, uh, a velocity vector of uh, 10 meter per second due north. So, nagta-travel ka pala ng 10 meter per second patungong north. So, yan yung example ng vector quantities. And here, as you can see on the right, we have a comparison between a scalar quantity and vector quantity. I itong scalar quantity na ito is the opposite of a vector quantity. Why? Because when we say scalar, it doesn't have any direction. Meron lang siyang value or meron lang siyang magnitude. Example of this, we have first the distance. And then for the vector also, we have displacement. These two quantities have, have a very, uh, or they are very uh, different from each other. Bakit? Let's say you are uh, traveling from Ormoc to Bye Bye, And then, meron ka pala nakalimutan or meron ka palang uh, friend na susunduin. So pumunta ka ng, bumalik ka ulit. Pero dun ka lang sa karidad. So parang bumalik ka from Ormoc to Bye Bye, then to karidad. Then your distance will be Ormoc to Bye Bye and then Bye Bye to karidad. However, for displacement, yung ika-calculate ika lang kasi ng displacement is yung mga position mo or the relative change of your position. So therefore, yung magiging displacement mo lang dun is from Ormoc to karidad. Hindi nakasali yung pumunta ka pa sa Bye Bye. So ganyan yung difference ng distance tsaka displacement and we also have speed so yung velocity mo kapag wala yang ano kapag wala yan siyang um, direction magiging speed lang siya and then for your mass of course that is an intrinsic property sa sarili mo and then if you multiply it with the acceleration in which acceleration is already a vector quantity therefore yung magiging uh, result niya is a vector quantity as well so that's why we have here the weight because weight is the product of your mass and the acceleration due to gravity of the earth with which is a vector quantity for energy it's just a scalar although there are some representations of energies especially on the uh, on the transferring of energy let's say a negative energy or yung energy na may negative sign sa una it means that the energy is being extracted or being inputted on the system. It depends. Kasi may mga ano na, kunyari may heat. Yung heat na in-input sa system, it is a positive. So, positive sign. Kapag heat is na-extract na from the system, it is a negative sign. And we also have for, for compressor. Kapag yung work um, input mo, hindi siya positive actually it's, uh, it 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 was taken or it is taken negative during calculation so magiba but yung mga negative tsaka positive sign nila it does not in indicate any direction for energy so scalar lang to for the acceleration of course it is a vector because let's say you accelerate towards north or northeast southeast so vector pa rin siya for density and also for this power of course this is an intrinsic property still scalar to however for the force and impulse vector na siya kasi pag sinasabing force of course kanang where does it act so meron kang question so that's why it needs direction for impulse this is the uh, the uh, uh, the reaction time of your applied force and it is very u useful especially during a, a, a car collision kasi Doon mo madetetek kung <coughs> gaano gaano ka kalaki yung yung effect or magnitude ng impact dahil sa impulse kasi yung impulse is the product of force times the time. So kapag maliit lang yung reaction mo therefore ang laki-laki ng impulse mo. Tatama agad 'yan. Kaya nga yung mga ibang sasakyan gusto nila na doon na lang i i, uh, i hit doon sa haystack compared kung doon ka mag hit dun sa may uh, dun sa may uh, wall yung concrete wall kasi dun is medyo ano like wasak as dun kasi sa haystack hindi hindi mawawasak or hindi madadamage yung sasakyan mo kung dun ka naman sa concrete wall of course sigurado 
wasak talaga yan, masisira. And then for scalar, we also have length, area, and volume. So it's a scalar only because it just defines the the length of a certain dimension. So kapag volume na, three dimension na, area, two dimension only. Pressure is a vector. Kasi, me, kasi yung pressure dito is the uh, ratio of your force over the uh, applied area or the cross-sectional area. So meron pa rin tong um, direction. We also have time since time is just our reference on the rate of change of a certain quantity or a certain phenomena. Therefore, scalar siya. How about momentum? Actually, momentum is also useful in collision theory. In nagsa-study ng mga collision of two objects and it is just the uh, product of your mass and velocity. So, kapag massive ka, tsaka ang laki-laki ng velocity mo, if you collide to a certain object, therefore, yung, yung momentum mo magta-transfer sa kanya, let's say, yung object na i-hit mo is, has a very low mass and it's just stationary, so therefore, siya na yung magmove So, like, maano talaga siya, he will be uh, push back. So, mapupush back siya, so siya naman yung magta-travel. So, parang ganun. And then next, we also have temperature. Uh, in For normal people, it measures the hotness and coldness of a body, but actually, it is the total energy in the uh, submolecular level. So, yung temperature. At wala siyang direction kasi it just tells the total energy of a microscopic or sub-level. Then, we also have gravity. So, as what I have said a while ago, so yung gravity, meron yang direction towards the uh, the center of our earth or towards the earth surface and for work yung work kasi is, is the uh, product of force times distance although force and distance or displacement are uh, two vectors but kung makikita mo sa operation niya product siya and then the later part I will discuss to you yung mga operations ng vector mabibilong kasi yung work sa that product so, 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 yung work na to, mabibilong to siya sa, sa that product, tong work na yan. So, therefore, for a that product kasi, yung answer niya is a scalar quantity. Therefore, yung work pala is a scalar quantity. And we also have drag here. Pag sinasabing drag, ito yung resistance ng air na may experience mo while you are traveling or a certain object travels. So, ito yung mag, magpipigil. And then, we also have lift. Actually, lifting force is the force that counteracts your weight. Especially sa mga airplanes natin. Kaya nga lumilipad yan sila kasi yung wings niya, nagkikreate siya ng high pressure on the uh, lowest part of the wing or below the wing and a low pressure above the wing. That's why due to that uh, pressure difference, so maglilift. Merong lift force na, na mapoproduce. And then the lift force is upward. Therefore, vector pala tong lift force. So, ito lift and chaka drag. And we can also uh, represent our vector. So, these are the example on how to represent a vector. So, you can just write a capital letter A and this symbol on the top, itong arrow. So, you can denote here that vector A is 100 meters. So, a displacement vector due north. So, meaning yung direction niya, pat-travel siya, or yung displacement is pa-north. And then, you can also write a vector in this way. So, bold letter A, which is equal to 100 newton. So, therefore, itong A pala is a force vector. Then, its direction is inclined at an angle of cosine 30 degrees relative to a certain axis. So, let's say it is uh, in y-axis. So, ganun. And then, we also have here, if you just uh, represent the magnitude of a vector only, so you can write here the absolute bar. So, absolute bar of A, then close absolute bar of A. So, ganito ka lang mag-represent ng vector. And then, if you want to illustrate or plot a certain vector, so you can have this one, the uh, bold arrow. So, may arrow siya, nakapoint siya. And then, you can just write its magnitude 100 units then direction this is psi 90 so kapag sinasabing nine, psi 90 uh, it points upward or it goes on the positive y axis in the Cartesian coordinate system so next 
Importante din to kasi we're going to discuss yung mga operations ng vectors. So we have here vector sum or the addition and vector difference. Yung itong dalawang to yung importante dito is that the uh, their answers so kunyari nagsasum nagsasum up ka ng dalawang vector let's say this is vector A and then this one is vector B so kapag isasum up mo siya so yung makukuha mo or yung answer is called as the resultant vector the same din sa vector difference still resultant pa rin so ano bang diferensya ng vector sum at saka vector subtraction or difference so let's start first with vector sum. Sa vector sum, so ganito pag draw mo or pag illustrate. Let's say I have this vector A directed towards the the right side, so vector A. And then if you're going to to uh, combine or to add vector A and B, so yung pag yung pagsulat mo sa B is ganito. So yung tail ng B, so ito ito yung tail niya is dun mo start sa head ng A. So, the tail of the next vector pala is on the head of the previous. So, ga ganyan yung parang rule niya. And then, after that, so for this case, dalawa lang sila na vector, A and B lang. Kung may isa ka pang vector, so dito mo i-start dito sa head ng B. Then, draw ka dyan depending upon its direction. But for this case, we only have two. So, in order to uh, solve the resultant, ganito yung rule. So, yung direction ng resultant or yung ano pala, tail pala ng resultant is magsimula siya sa first point. So, since dito, dito nag-start lahat yung A din dito, so dito mo siya i-start sa pag-draw yung resultant. Then, i-connect mo patungo dun sa head ng last vector. So, yan yung magiging head din ng resultant. Then, yan din yung direction niya. So, ganun lang. Ganun ka lang mag-sum ng vector. How about for a vector difference? So for a vector difference, let's say uh, A minus B. So vector A minus B. So pag sinasabing minus, so ano yan? It's just the same as A plus negative B. So meaning, nag-negative nag na yung uh, B na vector dito. Pag sinasabing negative of a vector, it's just the ano, vector that has the opposite direction compared to the original vector. So, yung original vector natin is B, then meron tayong negative B, meaning ito palang arrow na to, kapag negative na siya, dun pala siya i-direct sa kabila. So, dito na. Yung head or yung tail ng B ni Moses, dito pa rin, then yung head niya hindi na dun pa upward. Dito na pa downward. Kasi negative B. Eh. Kung negative A naman, so, hindi na siya patungo sa right side, kundi patungo na siya di Ha, start siya dito, din patungo siya sa left side din ganun pa rin yung resultant mag start ka sa initial, yeah, initial position and then you will end at the uh, head of the last vector so ganun lang and then aside from this operation we also have this dot product so pag sinasabing dot, dot product it's just the uh, the product of the uh, the uh, magnitude of the vector, so two vectors F and D, so yung magnitude ng nila, then the cosine of theta, so ibig sabihin ng dot product is just uh, you only project so parang pinoproject mo lang yung isang vector patungo sa isang vector, kasi di ba oh, F to tas may theta ka, <laughs> then as what I have told earlier, that, that, that is just the product of the magnitude F times D cosine theta, so kapag ipoproject mo pala yung F dito sa D, so anong value or com or i-resolve mo into component, so meron ka palang component dito na F cosine theta, meron ka rin component pataas na F sine theta since yung project, yung after lang natin is the uh, projected component of force F or itong vector F so yung projected component lang niya is yung F cosine theta then i-multiply mo since that product one siya, that's why we have F cosine theta times this vector d so that's why we have we have those statement na fd cosine theta for that product and for your information yung that product pala is applicable for work bakit? kasi yung work as what I have told you in the previous slide it is the uh, the product of force and the distance and then the force must be of course yung direction ng force must be parallel or collinear with the distance. That's why we need the component of 
the force that goes along this line of the displacement. Kaya nga, pinaproject siya. So, yun, yun yung F cosine of theta. And then next, we have this cross product. So, for cross product, it is applicable for uh, solving problems that involves uh, torque and moments. So, ganito yun. Uh, we have a vector A and a vector B. Then, in getting the uh, cross product, it is just the same as the area of this the area inside this uh, vector. So, we have A times B. Kapag yung theta mo is 90 degrees, so A times B lang. So, ito ay rectangle. Paano kung hindi siya rectangle? Paano kung uh, naka-incline siya into an acute angle or an obtuse, uh, obtuse angle? So, what will you do? So, uh, yan mo siya. Uh, recall your parallelogram. Yung A, B, sine of theta. But don't worry, class. We're going to talk that one later. So, ganito lang yung cross product. And then, yung direction niya is, um, hindi na siya maglalay coplanar with the uh, two vectors. It lies on a different plane or in a different dimension. Kaya nga, as you can see on this red arrow, this is the resultant direction of the cross product. So, A cross B, dito na yung magiging resultant niya. So, these are just, or these are the operations pala sa vectors. So, ito. Ito lang. Sa dalawa, tatlo, apat. So, sir, how about vector division? Actually, yung vector division does not exist. So, uh, hindi yan nag exist Ito lang yung vector sum, vector difference, that product, and cross product. So, uh, next. Next tayo. So, we also have um, placement of a vector. This is also very important for you to know on what are the types or ano ba yung pangalan kapag yung vector is nagkaganito, they are along a line, along a plane. So, meron siyang mga uh, uh, pangalan. So, let's start with coplanar vector. So, maging coplanar lang yung dalawang vector or tatlong vector or more if they lie on the same plane. So, let's have here a rectangular box. So, meron siyang, I mean, we have a re rectangle na may kulay na yellow. So, inside the yellow rectangle, we have two vectors. Vector B here and vector A. So, itong dalawang to, since nasa iisa silang rectangle and then this is a plane, so therefore, coplanar sila. So, they lie on the same plane. For collinear vector, so from the root line, so this vector lies on the same line of action or same path. So, we have vector B, then yung vector A, kasano ng vector B, and they are collinear with each other because they are on the same line of action or the same path. Next, we also have um, parallel vectors. So, for, for parallel vectors, they are uh, vectors that do not intersect or do not lie on the same point or do not start or do not end on the same point. So, yung application nito ng parallel vectors are couple moments or couple torques. When you say couple torques, these are uh, uh, two forces. Ito. Let's say this is force B and force A and they have the same magnitude. Pero opposite in direction niya kasi diba? That's why it will generate a couple moment or a couple turn. So, magta-turn to and in the middle is our fixed axis or the axis of rotation. So, ganito yung parallel vector. Hindi lang siya limited sa couple as long as you have a vector that does not have any included angle or infinite yung included angle niya meaning meron silang distance and wala silang pagkakataon na mag-intersect so ganun lang yung parang parallel vector mo then we also have a concurrent vector so pag sinasabing concurrent vector yung mga vectors mo so in this figure you, we have vector B, vector A, and vector C so all this vector lies or meet at a common uh, uh, point. So, hindi lang meet or maybe they, ano, they start from a common point. So, that is a concurrent vector. Or, sila, yung B, uh, A, and C are concurrent vectors. So, yun yung concurrent vectors. And of course, we have opposite. So, non-concurrent vectors. So, those are vectors that, of course, do not meet on the same point. So, we have here a 3D space as shown in the uh, yellow box. 
<coughs> or a or a yellow prism so we have here um, vector B so it's yung vector B and then we also have uh, vector A nga nag point siya dun sa left and then we also have vector B uh, vector C that points downward so wala silang parang common point na kung saan magmi-meet sila because they are uh, on the same on a, on a different position pala and different direction then last we have component vector so pag sinasabing component vector these are uh, vectors that are part of a resultant vector let's say we have a resultant r here shown in the black arrow then we can resolve this resultant or ano ba yung nagko-comprise sa kanya bakit nagiging ganito siya or or nagiging resultant siya so yun pala it is the uh, sum pala of this vectors a and vectors b so therefore this two here a and b are the components of this resultant vector so parang ganun lang siya then of course uh, mag-start tayo dun sa operation so Diba? As you can, as you remember from the uh, previous slide, we talk about the resultant of a vector. So, ano nga yung operation ng resultant of a vector? So, those are uh, vector sum and vector difference. Let's say we have a, uh, a two vectors, so labeled as vector A and vector B. So, kapag dalawa yung given ng vector mo and you are to find the resultant, so as you can see here, the resultant R, and then then these uh, two vectors pala are separated by this angle theta and and they also call this one as the included angle of these two vectors a and b in order to solve for the uh, magnitude ng resultant at saka yung direction niya syempre kasi yung resultant is a vector therefore kapag kapag um kapag hanapin mo yung vector of course it must have magnitude and direction so you can use this a uh, force polygon yung force polygon kasi class is um very uh, it works best geared sa mga ano sa mga vectors na dalawa lang kapag tatlo na siya medyo hindi na mas better siya sa dalawa lang na na ano vector kasi kapag tatlo na or more you can use the uh, second method that i will going to show to you later so uh, let's start with the uh, ano yung pag find niya ng magnitude. So, for magnitude, uh, you can use the cosine law. So, remember this one in your trigonometry. So, when we say cosine law, this is just the r squared is equal to the uh, sum of the squares of the uh, two sides, a squared plus b squared minus twice then product of a and b. Twice the product of a and b times the cosine of the included angle theta. So, ganito yung cosine law mo. So, meron ka ng r, so therefore, you can also write this as r is equals to square root of a square plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of theta. So, ito lang yung pag-solve uh, mo sa magnitude niya. And we also have sine law for its direction. I put here another two um, angles. We have angle phi and angle alpha. For angle phi, this is the direction of the resultant with respect to this vector A. You can have that one as the direction. You can also choose this. So, yung alpha mo dito. You can also use this because this is also the uh, angle of your resultant or the direction of your resultant relative to this vector B. Diba ito? Relative to this vector B. So, ganun lang. Uh, you can use this. So, this is the ratio of the side over its adjacent angle. So, let's say itong resultant, yung adjacent angle niya is yung theta. So, that's why it is r over sine theta, which is equal to b over sine phi, kasi yung opposite ng, <laughs> ng uh, side b is yung phi. And lastly, of course, yung a na vector over sine alpha. So, ganito lang yung pag-calculate uh, or pag-compute ng direction ng uh, resultant mo for the case of a, a two given vectors and also for this uh, method so itong method na to next I will show you the other method this is called the component method meaning review tayo dun sa 
dun sa placement ng vector, di ba, I've discussed yung mga component vector. Pag sinasabing component vector, ito yung, yun yung mga um, mga components or parts that constitute an entire vector. Let's say for this vector A. So, as you can see on this uh, uh, coordinate system. So, I labeled here Y or J. So, pag, pag sinasabing J, J hat, I think common niya sa mga vector. Kapag nakamit kayo ng J hat, ano lang yun, parang another uh, coordinate system for the y axis and also pag sinasabing i hat is just another coordinate system for the x axis then we have here three vectors vectors a vectors b and vector c so kapag i-resolve mo to si vector a of course of course yung component na vector a is meron siyang vector ax so dito tsaka vector ay kaya nga nagiging vector a siya the same thing with vector b Meron ka din ditong component niya na vec uh, vector bx and also vector by pa vertical. The same with c, you have a component along x, vector cx, and vector cy. So, ganun lang yung principle ng component method. So, in order to solve its magnitude, this is just the, uh, ano, the application of your Pythagorean theorem. Bakit naman? Kasi kapag i-resolve mo na lahat yung mga yung vectors dito para mag, para makita yung mga components nila so meron ka ng lahat ng mga components na nasa x at lahat ng mga components na nasa y so kapag meron ka ng dun so you can just simply uh, um, draw the resultant from the origin towards the head of the last vector so yung last vector natin is yung y man kasi nag start tayo sa x then y so meaning yung na generate mo na ano yung na generate mo na figure is a right, a right triangle so may right triangle ka na okay um let's draw para para maano talaga ninyo so draw natin let's see here so ito so parang ganyan let's say we also have here so ganon then ito meron kang uh, component vector along this x and it, itong uh, vertical vertical line na to we also have ve vector on the y so therefore meron ka nang na generate na right triangle kasi ito is um, 90 degrees to so therefore ito na yung resultant mo so class hindi to yung vector a yung sinasabi natin na ito yung ano ito yung um, the uh, component na sa lahat let's say yung vector y mo is the sum na kasi at parang parang dito sa formula to ba yung summation ng component sa x at saka summation ng component sa y so kapag isasum up mo sila so magiging single na to na vector so ito single vector na pa patungong y then we will have a single vector sa x axis so as what what you see it is a right triangle. So, therefore, magagamit mo yung uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem. Kasi ito, this is your hypotenuse. This is your first side and the second side. I mean, uh, let's just label here B. And also, let's, let's cross this out. Because the famous um, notation for this is yung C. So, therefore, remember, yung Pythagorean mo is just uh, C square equals to a square plus B square. So, since yung C natin is the same as the our resultant, so therefore, yung C pala natin is just the square root of A square plus B square. Kaya, meron tayo sa ganito. Meron tayo dito. Parang same dito. So, components nito sinasum up lang niya lahat ng mga components for every uh, vectors sa x then squared mo plus sum, sum sa lahat ng mga components along y then squared mo rin so yan yung resultant mo and the resultant is a scalar kasi ito oh, this is a uh, representation of your uh, magnitude and then for its direction class sorry po sa manok Pero kasing manok dito <laughs> sa boring house. So, for its direction, just take the tangent. Why? Because, uh, take a look but 
uh, take a look back on this uh, on this triangle. So this is our resultant and we have y and x so therefore yung direction pa ng ating resultant relative to this x axis is this angle here. Yung theta natin theta. So this angle right here. Therefore in order to uh, find angle theta so you can just use the tangent kasi given naman tong v y or the component vector along y and the component vector along x. So just use this tangent of theta which is equal to uh, component vector along y and component vector along x. So this is just the summation of every components of every uh, uh, kind of, ano, vector a, b, and c all over the uh, summation of the component vectors along x din. ax plus bx plus cx. So now, ito na yung direction mo for, the, for your resultant. And as you've noticed, itong uh, formula na to is for, is for 2D yung mga two dimension, two dimensional na mga mga vectors. So sa isang plane lang sila, plane y, plane x and y or plane i and j. <clears throat> so parang sa 2D lang to kasi x and y lang. How about if you're given a 3D? 3D na siya na vector. So meron na siyang component pala along k or along z. So for for ij pala yung katumbas niya sa z is yung k. So, i, j, k na. i hat, j hat, and k hat. So, for the resultant din, same pa rin. apply mo din yung Pythagorean, I didn't, Pythagorean na theorem. So, it's just the uh, square root of the sum of the components along x squared plus sum of components along y squared plus sum of components along z squared. So, this is for uh, ano, 3D na mga vector na. So, parang ganun lang siya. So, next, for the same sa component method pa din, since we already know the uh, direction of our uh, uh, theta, pero meron pa rin kulang or may tanong. Kasi yung tangent of theta natin, ang dami niyang ano, possible location on this Cartesian coordinate system. So this is the Cartesian coordinate system. As you can see on this red na, na arrow, uh, I mean gray na arrow. So, for the tangent, you have four possible placements. So, you can have on the first quadrant here. So, ito yung tangent, ha? And then, the second quadrant here. So, ito, second quadrant. Ito. We also, you also have on the third quadrant. So, ito siya. Ito siya na right triangle. And then, sa fourth quadrant, so ito. Then, first quadrant, so yan. So, si apat pala yung possible placement niya. So, paano natin ma malalaman kung dyan siya mabilong? So, go back dun sa formula on how to find the, uh, the uh, theta, the angle theta. So, use this. So, for the first quadrant pala, always note the um, design of the sum of your component vectors along y and the sum of the component vector along x. So, dapat itake, mo, uh, itake note mo yung sign nila. So, kapag yung sagot nila dun is uh, both positive for component y and component x, therefore, dito pala sila na, na nabibilong sa first quadrant. Kasi sa first quadrant class, as you have noticed, yung x natin is positive. Of course, nasa nasa right kasi siya, tas yung y din natin is upward, so therefore, kapag yung component mo, dalawang component mo x and y are both positive yung tangent nasa first quadrant kung yung tangent nasa second quadrant, yung x mo lang yung negative and y is positive pa rin kasi upward so ganun lang, kapag yung dalawa naman yung component mo along y is negative and yung component ng x mo is negative, therefore quadrant 3 ka pala, kasi diba sa quadrant 3 your x and y axis are both negative values. Then for quadrant 4, only the value of your component y yung negative kasi yung x na dun is already positive. So, ganun lang class ha. Huwag niyong kalimutan yung sign ng result mo sa pagko-component mo. Yung component ng y and saka component vector ng x. You always take note of the signs there. <clears throat> so, okay. I think you are um, ready na kasi alam nyo na yung mga 
methods. So, di ba, what are those methods in uh, computing the resultant of a vector? So, we have a force polygon for uh, vectors that that has only uh, I don't know, two components or for resultant vectors that has two uh, components only component vectors let's say a and b and we also have component method this can be applied for two or more vectors so pwede din siya ma-apply sa two vectors pwede din sa tatlo, apat, lima, etc so mas powerful pala yung component method so okay in order to visualize everything so let's have an example para malaman din para ma ma-learn nyo so let's say we have these two vectors a and b are separated by each other at an angle theta what is the effect of its resultant if both vectors are tripled? So here, una mo talaga ang gawin, especially for problems, you must suggest ko is, you must draw. You must draw the problem or illustrate the problem. So for this, sabi niya, may dalawa kang vector A and B. So para sa akin, I just draw this. So may, meron kang vector A, tsaka meron kang vector B. So ito. And then sabi kasi niya, separated by each other at an angle theta. So, meron akong angle dito na theta. So, it means that this angle is the included angle of the vectors B and A. And of course, yung resultant niya is um, drawn from the uh, tail of the first vector towards the head of the last vector. So, yung last vector natin is B. So, dun magdeterminate yung resultant mo. So, for this case, since dalawa lang yung component vector natin na, i na isa sum up, so therefore you can uh, use the force polygon method. So, let's uh, solve first for the first resultant. Bakit first resultant? Kasi, kung makikita mo, yung requirement kasi dito is the effect down ng resultant kung both vectors are tripled. Meaning, meron kang second condition. So, for the first condition, you just let a variable. Then, for the second condition, yung variable mo sa vector B tsaka vector A is magta-tripled na kasi di ba may condition dito. Ano daw mangyayari kung uh, yung both vectors daw are tripled? So, meron siyang condition dito. So, let's start. So, for the first resultant, we have magnitude of resultant 1 is, is equal to the square root of a1 squared plus b1 squared minus, t minus 2 a1 b1 cosine of theta. So, I, la I labeled a1 kasi ito yung vector bago pa siya nag-tripled. So, yung, ito yung original niya. And then, if you already have this one, so, remain as it is. Kasi wala tayong mga, wala tayong mga, ano eh, values for A1, B1. So, ganito lang. Then, don't worry. Kasi, um, mamaya, malaman mo naman yan kung need ba talaga mag-substitute or parang medyo hindi na. Kasi yung, ano lang naman natin, what we are after is just the effect lang. So, we have the second resultant. So, so for the uh, second resultant, based on our condition here, so, you can see on this uh, red line na dinodraw ko, so both vectors are tripled. Ibig sabihin, yung a sub 2 natin pala, yung bago na nating value para sa ating uh, vector a, is 3 times the value of the first, so 3 a sub 1. The same thing with b, yung b sub 2 natin is equal to 3 b sub 1, and, and ayun na. So, kapag malaman mo na ito na pala yung bago nila na value, so use again the Pythagorean uh, theorem in order to solve for the uh, resultants. I, I mean, not Pythagorean uh, theorem pala is ano pala, yung cosine law. So, gamitin mo yung cosine law. So, we have here R sub 2. So, this is now the second resultant or the new resultant for the given condition. So, this is equal to the square root of A sub 2 squared plus B sub 2 squared minus 2 A sub 2 B sub 2 cosine of theta. <coughs> So, since we know that A sub 2 has been tripled from the original, so we have we need to substitute here 3 A sub 1 squared plus 3 B sub 1 squared minus 2 times 3 A sub 1 times 3 B sub 1 cosine of their included angle. So, yung cosine theta. Next, <coughs> isimplify mo siya. So, simplify mo yung 3 kasi 3 cube is 9. Same with the second term, 9 pa rin. The third term, since we have 3 times 3, so we have 9. And class, I did not uh, simplify this 9 times 2 kasi I find I found out that uh, there is a common. So, common, and, common na kasi yung 9. Like, malaki na yung 
yung chance, yung probability malaki na, so that's why I didn't um, simplify na lang this 9 and 2, so I'll just remain 9 times 2, then yun na nga sinasabi ko I found a common factor for the 3 terms, this is 9, so kaya nga dito, dito sa linya na to pinafactor out ko na yung 9, so dito na siya sa labas so ito yung 9, then I can now extract this out of the radical sign kasi alam na naman natin na yung square root of 9 is either positive or negative 3. But here, I'll just take the positive kasi yung negative 3 is a null number. Hindi siya sapat para ma-explain dito sa problem na to. So just take the positive 3 kasi we are on the uh, on a problem that is uh, actually happening sa, sa surrounding. So hindi siya ano, um, negative cannot quantify for this moment. So, yung positive lang talaga. So, positive 3 square root of a sub 1 squared. So, ito na yung natira ha. After we factor out the 9. So, a sub 1 squared plus b sub 1 squared minus 2 a sub 1, b sub 1 cosine of theta. And as, and as you can see class, ito, ito pala na expression na to. So, as you can see, in-insert ko lang ko siya, is just the same as this one. Di ba class? Same lang sila. Therefore, ito pala is just equal to R1 or equal lang siya sa first resultant. So, ibig sabihin pala class, so obvious na. Ibig sabihin pala yung R2 natin, so copy lang natin dito, yung R2 pala natin is just equal to 3 times our resultant or our first resultant. So, therefore, masasabi natin na Diba, question dito is, what is the effect of its resultant if both vectors are tripled? So, therefore pala, yung effect ng resultant niya is that it is also tripled. So, tripled also. So, ganun lang. Ito yung sagot sa number 1. So, ganun lang class ha. For a vector or for a resultant vector that has only uh, two components, A and B, you can just use the force polygon. But you can also use the component method, but yung pinaka... <laughs> practical dito para sa akin is yung um, force polygon kasi dalawa lang na vector eh. next let's jump to the uh, next example so we have here uh, two forces two force vectors with magnitude 4 newtons so 4 newtons daw and then 8 newtons act on a body at right angles to each other so therefore anong ibig sabihin dito sa at right angles so at right angles to each other so, meaning pala class is yung included angle nila is 90 degrees kasi dito sa right angles na to. So, as you can see on the illustration, so ito na yung 8, saka dito yung 4. Since at right angle man sila, therefore itong angle na pala to, represented by angle theta, is 90 degrees. O yung tinatawag natin included angle. Then, sabi dito, find the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. So, same pa rin yung magnitude at saka direction ng resultant force. So since we are given with a with two component vectors 8n and 4n and a resultant vector itong r which is equal to okay it's still unknown so we can still use the force polygon kasi di ba yung force polygon meron kang dalawang vector na isa sum up sapat na para ma solve yung resultant so therefore use pa rin yung cosine law. So, ito yung cosine law again. The resultant is just equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 4 times 8 cosine of the included angle. So, in, I indicate here that since cosine 90 is 0, so 0 pala siya, therefore, itong term na to, the third term for inside the radical sign is already 0 or cancel out. So, ma-zero na siya. That's why, on the second line of the uh, solution, we only have square root of 4 squared plus 8 squared. And then, if we're going to plug this in your calculator, you now have the approximate value of our resultant um, force, which is approximately equal to 8.94 newtons. So, yun lang. Parang easy lang yung pagkuha ng magnitude. How about for its direction? So, for this... Diba sabi dun sa, ano ko, pag-discuss ko sa force polygon, you can use sine law. Okay, you, of course, you can use talaga sine law. But for me, bakit hindi sine yung ginagamit ko? Bakit tangent ako? Kasi right triangle na to eh. Oh, right triangle. And then, sabi nga dun sa discussion ko, you can use the angle phi 
or yung angle alpha. For me, angle phi lang gagamitin ko. But don't worry, in this example or in this uh, problem, I uh, put here the uh, two options. So, first is with respect to 4 newtons. So, phi pala yung makukuha mo dito. So, let's just take tangent. Kasi, right, triangle tayo eh. So, tangent lang. So, tangent opposite 8n over 4n, the uh, adjacent. So, we have tangent phi is equals to 2. Then, take the arc tangent of these two. Take mo ng arc tangent yung 2. So, we have an approximate value of phi which is equal to 63.43. So, ito pala yung direction ng ating resultant relative to the vector 4n. So, ito siya. How about the alpha? So, ito na. Sa second part is yung alpha na yung kinukuha. So, still, use the tangent law. So, yung maging opposite na dito, hindi na si 8n. Kasi si 8n is adjusted na siya sa alpha. So, anong opposite ng alpha? Of course, itong 4n. So, therefore, Munguna si 4n. Tangent alpha is equal to 4n over 8. Or the tangent of alpha is equal to 0 0.5. Then take the R tangent for this one. So we have the value of our alpha which is approximately equal to 26.57. So therefore, ito pala yung um, direction ng resultant natin relative to the vector 8 newton. So ganun lang. Ganun lang pag uh, solve sa mga itong klase. You can use force polygon, then use the cosine law. Then for the direction, you can have the sine law. But, not all the time. Or, you can use it all the time. But for me, ang the best uh, method to attack in this example, since naka sine 90 na kasi siya, meaning naka right triangle. So just use tangent na lang. Para mas simple. So next, let's go to question number 3. So sabi dito, if the resultant of two forces, 6 meter per second, I mean, sorry, ito pala is two uh, vectors. So, vectors pala, I mean, I mean two velocity. So, sorry, uh, two velocity, two velocity vectors. So, mga vector pala to sila. Two velocity vectors, 6 meter per second and 5 meter per second. So, hindi pala to forces, two velocity vectors is 9 meter per second. So, 9 meter per second daw. Itong 9 meter per second, ano to? So, this is already your resultant vector. ba? Kasi, sabi na to, if the resultant daw. So, ito na pala yung resultant mo. So, ito yung resultant vector mo. 9 meter per second. Sabi nito, find the angle. O, the angle between them. Meaning, this is our, ano man to? This is our included angle. So, included angle pala to siya. So, included angle. O, ba? Then, again, class, yung first step talaga sa pagsosolve, you need to illustrate it. So, for me, ito yung vector ko. But, but it's up to you. We have our own representation naman. So, ito yung 5 meter per second ko. naka juicy siya sa east. But, take note, class, Kung yung problem na is meron na silang binibigyan ng direction, of course, hindi ka na pwedeng na, na mag-ano-ano dyan. Like, sa sarili mo lang. Hindi. Doon ka na mag-depende at magbase sa nakasulat sa given. So, I have here 6 meter per second and I write theta. So, this is the included angle of 5 meter per second and 6 meter per second na mga vector. And of course, yung adjacent niya na side sa angle phi or the included angle is automatic the resultant. O yung resultant natin is 9 meter per second. So, <clears throat> since angle yung ipangit, yung inahanap, so let's try. Let's try to analyze kung ano bang appropriate na formula gamitin. So, since we only have two vectors, uh, 6 and 5, and then isang resultant, so meaning we can still use force polygon. So, yung force polygon, kapag may mga included angle na involved, ano yun? Sine law or cosine law? Siyempre, yung cosine law. So, that's why, meron tayong formula na ganito. So, ito yung cosine law natin. So, you need to remember this, yung cosine law. Kasi, importante kasi yung cosine law eh. So, this is cosine law. And then, plug in the values. So, we don't have any problem for the values if we sub substitute it directly because um, wala naman siyang ano, conversion units like yung units niya are ano, similar to each other. So, therefore, walang 
uh, wala tayong dapat i-convert. So, just plug in na lang, 9 squared is equal to 6 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 6 times 5 cosine of theta. And then, transpose this one on the left side. Then, yung 9 din is to the right side. Kaya, mayroon tayo dito. Mayroon tayo nito. Para yung cosine of theta na lang talaga yung maiwan. So, dinidivide natin ang both sides ng 2, of, uh, 2 times 6 times 5. That's why we have this cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 third. So, kapag <coughs> itake mo yung arctangent niya, so therefore, ito pala, ano class? Theta na lang pala to ha? Hindi yan cosine of theta. Kasi ito pala is, or yung kasunod dito is just uh, theta is equal to the arc cosine of negative 1 third. So, ganun lang. So, ito na pala yung theta. Then, this is approximately equal to 109.47 degrees. Meaning, so my first, in my illustration, yung theta natin is an acute angle, less than 90. Kasi makikita mo naman. Pero pala, if you plot it in a real, ano talaga, real, uh, real na graphing, uh, kuan, graphing calculator. So, kapag ipa-plot mo to, yung sa Cartesian coordinate plane na, so, meron ka palang obvious angle na equivalent to 109.47 degrees. So, ito na yung parang included angle nilang dalawa. So, ganun lang. <coughs> the next, how about if we are given a uh, force that is in a form <coughs> or is in a component uh, vector form. So, ganito. Meron daw sabi dito, meron daw ang three forces. So, three force vectors. And then, it intersects at a single point. So, ano bang ibig sabihin sa phrase na to intersect at single point? Ibig sabihin pala ito, this is the, so ano to siya? It means that the uh, three forces, so yung three forces pala natin are, ano? They are concurrent. So, concurrent pala sila sa isa't isa. So, they are concurrent with each other. Then, Ito yung force 1 natin. For force 1, we have I plus 3J. So, don't worry class. Huwag kayo masyak. Ano ba ibig sabihin nito? Pag sinasabing I, diba? Take a look at this uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So, ito ang nasa baba. Take note with this one. So, diba? Yung Y natin is just another term for our J hat. So, kapag sinasabing J dyan, or sinasabing nito 3J, meaning meron ka palang 3 units sa so, Y axis. So, 1... Then, 2. And then, 3. So, parang ganun. So, parang 3 units. And also, for I, this is stands for the x-axis. Component along the x-axis. So, we have 1 here. So, meron ka palang isang unit lang dito. For the force 1. And then, the same true with force 2 and force 3. And the next, yung question is, uh, ilan da yung magnitude, tsaka direction. Sa ang direction, ito nag nag-act yung resultant force vector. So, for this, sin sinasabi ko dito, you should remember that x coordinate is presented by i and y coordinate by by j. So, don't forget that one class, ha? So, for solving its magnitude or for uh, solving this type of problem, since tatlo na siya, so hindi na kaya ng vector polygon. That's why you need to use component method. So, di ba? Yung component method, yung resultant niya is just the same as the Pythagorean theorem. So, meron tayong the magnitude of R is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the component along X. And then, of the squares also of the component along Y. Then, for X, isasum up natin. So, ano yung mga components sa X? We have here, force 1 is I, force 2 is 2I, force 3 is negative I. So, therefore, put here 1 plus 2 minus 1 squared plus itong 3 plus 7 plus 4 is ito yung mga components along sa JMO so we have here yung 3J yung 7J and 4J isa sum up mo siya nagiging 14 yung sa X since 1 plus 2 minus 2 yung mga 1 dito mga cancel that's why dalawa lang siya then simplify this you have now the resultant which is equal to square root of 200 then further simplification we have an approximate value of our resultant which is equivalent to 14.14 .14 units. Hindi kasi indicate na kung ano yung unit. 
whether it is kilogram pa pa, etc. So I just use 14.7, uh, 14.14 units. So ito. As you can see on the red box na ginuguhit ko. So yan yung answer niya. Yan yung magnitude niya. For the direction naman guys, of course, balik tayo dun sa component method. Di ba sinasabi ko for direction is just take the tangent of theta. Kasi di ba nare-resolve mo na sa x, di ba? Marawag ka ng giusa na ni mo ba? So, sinabay mo na sa x at saka sa y. So, therefore, yung generate pala niya resultant is ano, ganito, parang diagonal or in short, right triangle siya. May hypotenuse siya. Meron siyang dalawang side na A and B. So, mukha mo talaga. Then, for tangent also, since right triangle siya, so it's just the the ano the uh, ratio of the component along y and the component or all over the component along x so we have here so let's simplify for the component along y we have 3 plus 7 plus 4 so we have 14 for the x we have 1 plus 2 minus 1 so we have positive 2 and then 14 divided by 2 so ito 14 divided by 2 is equals to 7 so arctan of this answer arctan of 7 we have an approximate value of our uh, uh, theta which is equal to 81.87 degrees so ganun lang with respect to sa i hat or sa x axis yung 81.87 um, degrees so gana, ganun lang mag uh, solve ng ano mo ng direction para sa mga vectors that is comprised already of uh, uh, ano 3 or more na mga um, vectors so ganun lang then uh, okay basta class don't remember kapag dalawa lang yung given a vector you can use the uh, force polygon but if, if it is uh, three or more so you can now use the component method then for number five so medyo complex na ito kasi you are given three forces but with direction na like yung direction niya hindi lang naglimited sa first quadrant kundi sa iba't ibang quadrant so we have a uh, first force so vector siya kasi may magnitude ha tingin mo 600 newton magnitude diyan 40 degrees direction in the first quadrant so dinagdagan pa talaga sa first quadrant lang pala to siya hindi siya mag exist, uh, exist sa ibang quadrant and we also have the second force F2 so don't worry this guys change lang natin so this is F2 pala is equal to 800 newtons at 20 degrees and in the second quadrant so pangalawang quadrant and then the last one is F, F of 3 which is equal to 200 newton at 60 degrees in the fourth quadrant so again class remember always refer your angle to the x axis so ganun talaga lahat mga problems x axis talaga yan sila so please refer your angle to that axis so, in solving magnitude, so in this case, tatlo naman to, di ba? Tatlo na nakita nyo, force 1, force 2, and force 3. Meaning class, hindi na magagamit natin yung force polygon, pati na yung cosine law. Magagamit natin ito is yung component method. So, kapag sinasabing component method, again, this is just the square of the sum of the squares of the component force x and the component force y. So, ganun lang siya class. <coughs> and then, Bago pa dito kasi since medyo complicated siya so let's break down into individual magnitudes like i-resolve -re natin kung ano yung magnitude natin along x and magnitude natin along y so for x since yung represent uh, representative niya or component ng forces along x of course it is somewhat related to the cosine of theta so we have for force 1 this is 600 cosine 40 degrees so dito positive value siya kasi yung x natin is on the positive side positive x axis dito minus na minus 800 cosine of 20 degrees kasi yung force 2 natin yung x natin naglalay na dito sa negative negative x axis so therefore subtraction plus 200 cosine 60 degrees so yung 200 dito bakit siya positive kasi yung x or yung placement ng f of 3 natin yung force 3 natin is nasa fourth quadrant in which yung x natin is positive pa rin. So, um, um, perform the operation. So, simplify the uh, sum of the uh, component force along x. So, we have approximate value of negative 192.13. So, ito na yung 
um, resultant on the x component lang. How about for y? So, same pa rin. I-add mo siya. So, we have uh, 60 sine 40. Positive. Kasi yung f1 is nasa first quadrant and y is positive. For second, we have 800 sine 20 degrees. And, sti and still, hindi ko pala lagyan dito. So, it is ano pala? 800 sine of 20 degrees. So, dito, positive pa rin since on the uh, second quadrant, yung y mo dito is still positive. Positive number pa rin. And then last, we have 200 sine 60 degrees. Negative. Bakit negative? Kasi yung F3 ni mo is on the fourth quadrant and the y here is negative kasi pointing downward. And then, uh, simplifying everything, we have a, uh, a force or the sum of the component force along y which is equal to approximately 486.08 newton so ito na yung resultant ng force mo along y in order to get the uh, overall res uh, overall resultant so we have here is, is substitute na natin gikan to dito so galing to dito so we have r is equals to the square root of the sum of the squares of the component force along x so ito negative 192.13 and the square of y along y so 486.08 if we perform the operation we can arrive an approximate value of our resultant equivalent to 522.67 newton so therefore ito na pala yung resultant ng ating uh, tatlong forces how about its direction so direction uh, direction tayo for direction you can use the tangent theta which is equal to the uh, component force along y and component force along x so for y balik tayo dito we have negative 1 and 2 point uh, I mean 460.08 so ito pala is substitute mo dito so diba na substitute na siya then f of uh, f of x or force along x component force along x we have negative 1 and 2 point 13 medyo ano talaga siya mas mababa then negative kumpara sa uh, component force along y then perform the operation, we have a tangent uh, of theta which is equal to negative 2.52995. Then take the arc tangent, we have an approximate value of our theta equivalent to negative 68.43. Ang tanong, hanggang, dit, hanggang uh, dito lang ba tayo sa negative? Of course, we need to interpret why negative. So yung ibig sabihin para negative is that Ano pala siya? Siguro hindi talaga to siya sa first quadrant. Maybe sa ibang quadrant. Pero sa ang quadrant naman. So, what I have told you a while ago on the previous slides, look at the sign of this uh, components along y and along x. So, dito natin makikita sa second line. So, ito. Since sa second line, yung y natin is positive and yung x natin is negative, therefore, saan man to na quadrant? So, x negative daw, then y positive. Ah, so therefore, second quadrant pa siya. That's why yung final answer dito is um, 68.43 degrees second quadrant. So, ganun lang pag um, kuha ng <coughs> pagkuha ng magnitude and direction of the resultant forces for three forces here. For three forces stem. So, ganun lang class. Next, another way din sa pagsusolve ng ganun kasi medyo yung pagsolve natin sa mga individual components is uh, parang hindi siya systematic so we have here a systematic way of solving those although long method ni siya but it it is very reliable whenever you found that there are some errors so ma makikita mo kaagad that's well organized siya so this example we have a question like find the magnitude and direction of resultant force from the four component forces so apat na ha four component forces niya we have F1 100 newtons at 40 degrees south of east F2 is equal to 50 newton at 10 degree due east and if F of 3 or force 3 is 150 newtons at 50 degrees west of north and F sub 4 equals 80 north 80 newton pala at southwest dito <coughs> of course yung first procedure is dapat unahin mo yung ano unahin mo pag illustrate yung problem so to illustrate we have here a uh, Ano, Cartesian coordinate uh, plane we have north, south, east, uh, west so this is just the replacement for east and west this is the x-axis 
north to south the y axis but it's okay it's still the same so let's uh, plot the first force so it state here 100 newtons at uh, 4 degrees south of east so south of east man pag sinasabing south of east mag simula ka sa east dito ka sa east bakit? kasi sabi daw niya itong 40 degrees daw is pa south siya galing east south of east so meaning south siya galing east so galing east pala then move 40 degrees or rotate 40 degrees south so ito na yung F1 mo so hindi pala siya ibig sabihin na nagsimula ka sa south then patungo kang east no it's different thing it is galing ka sa east then pa south ka kasi south of east then for uh, second force so we have 500 newton at uh, 10 degree due, uh, due east medyo nakakalito siya pasensya na ano pala to 500 newton due east na lang to kasi yung 10 degree nagiging na like nakalito na so pasensya medyo na na ano dito yung pag ano pag input ng uh, ng example problem so wala pala to it's just 50, 50 newtons due east so pag sinasamin due east east is yung force mo, yung vector mo is naglalay siya sa x-axis so same dito sa force 2 na siya sa x-axis na nalocate na then for the third force we have 150 at 50 degrees west of north so the same with the uh, first force west of north da, pag sinasabing west of um, north start at the north kasi diba dito south daw of east start siya sa east so dito west of north start siya sa north then patungo sa west kasi sabi niya west the of north so meron kang 50 degrees uh, dito for your force 3 but actually itong 50 degrees na to pwede naman tong gamitin para ma-resolve mo yung force 3 mo along uh, along along y I mean along x and also along y but if you use 50 degrees you can have equal tangent na identity like cotangent of 50 is your uh, ano basis para dito kasi iba na eh kasi yung tangent lang diba yung placement ng tangent is dito lang itong theta na to theta let's say theta phi so ito lang dapat yung <coughs> um, placement sana ng ating direction but meron tayong meron tayong nasa kabila 50 degrees so anong gagawin natin na uh, gagawin natin dito of course since this is uh, 90 degree therefore automatic yung phi pala natin dito so itong phi pala dito is already equal to of course 40 degrees so wala nang problema so yan yung f of 3 and then sa last is yung f of 4 which is equals to 18 newton at southwest so ito southwest yung f of 4 bakit nilagyan ko siya agad ng 45 degrees anong meaning dun pag sinasabi kasi yung southwest northeast southeast um, mga, mga ganon northeast is that um, kapag nabilong ka or kapag nabilong yung vector mo along that southwest, southeast, northeast line meaning yung um, angle mo with respect to the uh, to the uh, um, x-axis is ano, ano man, 45 degrees since yung placement ng southwest is midway between the ano between west and south or south and east, east and north etc. So, ganun lang. Kaya nga, automatic to 45 kasi midway siya. Midway yung, uh, pag, yung kalagayan ng force F4. Then, in order to uh, in order to solve sa mga components niya, so we have here iniisa-isa ini ko. Ito, so, ito yung force vector. So, we have F1, si equals to 100N at 40 degrees south of east. Tapos, F2, 15 newtons. At 10 degrees, wala na to kasi due east lang. F of 3 uh, is west of north. F of 4, 18 newton at southwest. So therefore, 45 degrees. For component vector along x or along east in this uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate system, so we have F1 of x. So we have here um, 100 cos and 40 which is equal to 76.6. For F of 2x, 50 cos and 0 or just 50 kasi 0 man it due east kasi to eh due east so 0 yung cosine for this uh, f of 3 you have 150 sine 50 or just, just equivalent to negative 144.9 so 
Bakit negative yung f of 3? Kasi yung x natin dito is andun na second quadrant. And second quadrant is negative. How about f of 4? f of 4 is equal to 80 cosine of 45 which is equal to negative 56.7. Kasi diba f of 4, yung component niya along x is just this projection ito. So it's just um, 80 cosine of 45 which is equal to negative 1. Uh, negative 56.25 Sir, bakit negative to? Of course, yung F4 mo is andun siya sa third quadrant and sa third quadrant yung um, yung sign yung sign ng ating X is negative. That's why um, this is um, negative 56.27 Then, sum up natin yung mga components along X, we have this negative 74.87 So, konti lang. At least, meron the same thing with the component vector along y. So, just use the sign of theta. Kung anong theta ba sila. So, we have fy of 1, negative 64.28. Bakit negative? Kasi, yung placement ng <coughs> uh, first force is saan man. Dito siya sa quadrant 4. And remember, yung quadrant 4 natin, yung y na is negative. So, that's why negative. F2y. Since due east man siya, so, sa x-axis lang siya, walang y, walang inclination, therefore, 0 yung f2y natin. So, 0 siya. Then, for f3y, we have 150 cosine 40, which is equal to negative 114.91. Again, f3y, so dito siya second quadrant. Yung y natin dito, of course, I mean, um, oh, so dito pala siya. Actually, this one here, kagamali pala dito. Actually, this one is 150 sine of 50 ba? Kasi, ah, oo, oh, pwede pala siya. Oh, sorry guys. Ito pala, sine of 50 is just equal to, ano man, cosine of, cosine of 40. Kasi, diba, x tayo, bakit sine, sir? Take a look at this. Meron tayong 50 degrees dito. Ito yung x natin, ba? Ito yung f ito yung sinasabi natin na wait lang ha, ito, ito siya na part is uh, f f of 3x so ito, pag susob or pag kuha nito is just f3 sin of 50 degrees kasi ba opposite na to eh, ito yung adjacent mo so therefore I have here 150 sin 50 degrees. So, we have negative 144.9. For if 3y, nilagay ko dito um, 150 cosine of 40. Or, you can just um, write here um, I mean, I think it's not it's not, ano, hindi siya cosine 40. Kasi yung cosine 40, ito yung 40. Kapag mag cosine ka ng 40, ito, x pa rin. So, dapat sine 40 or cosine 50 degrees. So, for this thing pala, um, di pa tanong natin, hindi siya cosine 40 but cosine of 50. So, uh, i-check muna natin class ha. So, I have your calculator in my hand. So, let's say uh, 150 times cosine of uh, 50. Answer pala dito is hindi pala to, um, correct. Yung correct niya is 96.42. So, 96.42. For the uh, component uh, vector y on the uh, fourth force, fourth na vector f, so, dito is 80 sine 45. So, sti kasi dito eh. So, 80 sine, pa, sine talaga siya kasi yung y. Bakit negative? Of course, kasi on the third quadrant and the value of y there is negative. So, if we sum up this one. So, magbabago na siya kasi meron tayong binabago na, um, binabago na answer. So, we have negative uh, 64. Meron calculator dito. 64.28 plus 0 kasi wala. So, sa f of 3y is positive kasi positive yung y dyan. So, plus 96.42. Minus 56.57. So, ito. 56.57. So, yung answer pala natin is negative 24.43. So, hindi pala ganito kalaki. So, i-crash out natin. Yung answer pala dito is 
equal to negative follow me 24.43 so ito sila ito silang dalawa yung sagot for fx negative 74.87 for fy is negative 24.43 so, after uh, solving the, uh, the sum of the components along x or along east or component along y or along north, so we can now solve the magnitude and the direction. Kasi ito lang talaga yung pinakamain importante. fx and fy. The sum of the components along x and component along y. So, here, yung next natin gagawin, solve natin yung magnitude. So, for the magnitude, use yung Pythagorean theory for 2D na uh, vectors. 2D vectors in, since yung Cartesian coordinate system natin is 2D. So, plug in there, negative 74.87 squared for the com sum of the component along X. But for Y, crash out natin to kasi this is equal to negative uh, 24.43. Diba? Ito na yung bagong value natin. Negative 24.43. Squared natin, so this is now B, the uh, square root of, let's say, uh, yan na natin ha, i-plug in natin. So we have negative 74.87 squared plus um, negative 24.43 uh, squared. So we have... 6 to we have 6202 point um, 3418 so ito pala yung sagot and then after that uh, take the square root so we have here an approximate value of square root of the answer in your calculator approximate value of 78.75 newtons so, ito pala yung resultant natin. So, resultant is approximately equal to 78.75 newtons. So, <clears throat> yan yung bago natin resultant. And then, for uh, for solving the direction, so direction naman tayo, use the tangent. Kasi diba, dun, in solving for the, uh, ano, para sa component method pala, gamitin mo yung tangent. So, tangent theta is equal to f y over f x. So, Again, ito, hindi ito negative 2, 235, it's negative 24.43. Kasi diba, tingnan sa previous slide. So, it is negative 24.23. So, balik tayo dito. So, um, re resolve again. So, resolve natin. Actually, this is not um, 3.14. This is... I have calculator here, 24.43 divided by 74.87. We have 0, 0 0.326298118. So, arctan of this uh, new value, 0 0.3262. Um, 9, 89181 So, our tangent of that uh, value, you we have So, here in my uh, calculator, our tan of the uh, value, we have a theta of 18.07 degrees So, 18.07 degrees And then, sir, saan ba ito na ano? Saan ba ito siya na quadrant? So, Titingnan natin yung value ng uh, component mo along y and component along x. Since both are negative, therefore, yung placement pala nila is on the third quadrant. So, dito pala sila nalagay sa third quadrant. Dito sila. So, that's why we have an approximate value of theta. Our final answer is um, 18.07 degrees on the third quadrant. So, nasa third quadrant sila. So now let's jump to uh, vector dot product. Di ba alam na natin yung uh, pagkuha sa resultant of a vector and the resultant of a vector is good for vector addition and subtraction. So we have now e dot product. Pag tinasabing dot product, this is a 
scalar product operation. Meaning, yung sagot pala sa that product is a scalar quantity. So, hindi na siya magiging vector. So, so anong example ng mga quantities na ito? So, ito yung mga work and saka energy. So, this is used in solving magnitude of work. Kasi yung work is the product of two vectors, the uh, force and the displacement. But, although uh, it is a product of two vectors, but the resultant or its answer is a scalar one. Kaya nga, scalar tong work na to. So, let's have this. What if I have this vector A, which is um, inclined relative to vector B. So, therefore, they have this included angle theta. For a dot product, since dot product man meaning it involves multiplication. So, nag-multiply tayo. So, multiplication. So, kapag sinasabi multiplication, i-multiply im pala natin yung vector A tsaka vector B. Paano? So, so ganito. Actually, hindi mo siya ma-multiply if yung A mo is nasa kabilang banda. You need to project A to uh, the uh, line of the vector B and then multiply. So, ganito yan. Ano yung projection ng A mo dito? So, kapag yung A project mo sa B, so, I have your A line, di ba? Ito line po project mo. Patungong B. Therefore, ito na pala yung length ng A mo. Ito yun, yung length ng bagong A mo. Pero hindi to siya equal to A. It's the magnitude of vector A times the cosine of theta. Remember, this is a uh, right triangle. May angle ka. Dito ka na side. Tapos may hypotenuse. So, therefore, itong side na pala nito is the cosine of the, your hypotenuse. Cosine theta by hypotenuse. How about this? From here to here, of course, this is the magnitude of your um, B. So, ito na yung uh, vector B mo. Yan yung mag, uh, magnitude mo. Therefore, yung dot product pala ng vector A dot B represented by this, kasi dot multiply eh, kaya tantawag siyang dot product is just equal to the magnitude of B so ito na length na to times this length A cosine of theta. So, we have B times A cosine of theta. So, ganun lang. Then, sir, um, always ba na yung A lang pala yung pwede i-project dun sa B? Of course, we can have the B to be projected on A. As you can see on this second figure. So, meron tayong A and B uh, separated by this angle theta or your included angle nila. Therefore, if we want to to project B instead of A, so, i-project natin yung B. Project natin dun. So, therefore, itong itong distance na to from here to there is B cosine of theta di ba? kasi it is a right triangle di ba? right triangle siya. so we have B cosine theta how about this? this vector A so this is just the magnitude of A so therefore pwede na natin ma-multiply sa dalawa kasi they are already collinear with, with each other so dapat collinear pala sila they should be collinear so A dot B is the same as A times B cosine of theta. So, therefore, itong dalawang to is just equal. So, ito, ito na formula na to, both are equal. So, equal pala to. Therefore, we can uh, state pala na yung um, property ng that product is ano siya, um, commutative property. So, commutative property. Kasi, pwede ba siya ma mabaliktad? Pwede siya maging A dot B which is equal still to B dot A. Kasi ito pala, since nanguna ito yung B, pwede mo ito masulat na uh, B dot A. So, ganun. Pwede siya masulat na B dot A ha, or A dot B. So, that product follows commutative property and even so, additional information even distributive distributive property distributive property let's say we have here um, A multiplied by so that product then the sum so vector addition of I mean this is B plus C 
is the same as a dot b plus uh, a dot c. So, ganun lang. Dinidistribute mo lang. So, it follows two properties of algebra. We have commutative and distributive property. So, yan yung um, that product mo. And take note class. Ito talaga importante din to. Sabi ito, if A is 90 degrees, meaning there is no projection, why? Okay, let's have this um, illustration. So, pasensya medyo, um, ano siya. So, we have here a vector X and vector Y. Separated by, sabi ito, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So, is there a projection that exists? Kunyari, ipoproject natin yung X sa Y. So, sir, ganito mag-project. Um, tama ba yan? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi yung pag-project mo, itong angle na to, hindi na siya 90 degrees. So, 90 degrees not equal to your projection. So, meaning pala, kapag yung included angle ng dalawang vector is 90 degrees, meaning that product mo is 0. Kasi, ibig sabihin, wala ka nang ma-project. So, wala nang wala nang ma-project. Oh. Kasi, yung that product is more on uh, projection siya. So, projection. Since wala ka nang ma-project, therefore, um, zero na yung that product mo. Okay, for a that product, <coughs> kasi yun is more on ano yun siya, parang two vectors lang si parinid by an angle theta. How about if you are given a A, a vector that is in the coordinate system. Let's say we have a two-dimensional vector. We have here y or j and x and i. So, the uh, that product goes this way. So, we have magnitude of a times magnitude of b cosine theta. So, this equation is from the previous. It's just equal to uh, a dot b. So, if we're given a uh, component or a vector form that is already uh, in the form of a coordinate system. So, meron na siyang x at saka y. So, this uh, notation right here can be uh, rewritten as the product of the sum of the components. So, we have ax plus ay, then component of vector b on x and component of vector b on y. That product meaning i-multiply mo lang siya, meaning i-distribute mo siya each terms. So, we have ax times bx we have ax bx then ax times by we have ax by the same true with the second term ay times bx we have ay bx then ay times by we have ay by however hindi lahat ng ito is may sagot bakit because let's uh, remember those uh, important uh, points that i have said to you on the last slide or on the previous slide Because when you say AX and BY and AYBX, wala silang projection pala. Bakit? Let's say AX mo. ba diba? X dito. So, dito pala yung AX mo. How about your BY? O, dito yung BY ko. So, makakaproject ka ba sa AX at BY? Hindi. Kasi yung included angle niya, hindi siya magiging 90. So, hindi siya magiging 90 degrees. Kasi yung included angle pala nila is already 90 degrees so 90 degrees meaning wala so therefore zero pala yung dot product nito Th that's why I put it as zero so you, what's left na lang is ax bx plus ay by so therefore for a two dimensional vectors so the uh, the dot product pala is equal to magnitude of a times magnitude of b cosine of their included angle which is equal to ax, so the uh, product of the component vectors along x for both vectors a and b, and ay times by, so the sum of the, of the products of two vectors along x and along y. For three-dimensional, meaning kasali na si z, so ganun pa din, ax, bx plus ay, by plus az, bz, meaning wala tayong nag-exist na AX um, AX B Z and um, 
I mean B oh AX BZ and AY BZ. Wala to kasi hindi pa rin to ma-project. So this two right here cannot still be projected. So ganun 'yun. So let's have an example. <clears throat> We have here, sabi dito, find the angle between uh, 3x minus y plus z is equal to 0 and x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 0. So, for this case, sir, bakit ganito? Is it a vector? Of course, this is a vector represented by a certain uh, unit on the x, certain unit on the y, which is 2, and certain unit on z, which is 2. Therefore, the uh, given 3D lines, so, therefore, the given are 3D lines. So, ito, 3D lines. So, mga 3D lines ito kasi meron lang components sa X, sa Y, tsaka sa Z. And we can call them vectors A and B. So, ilet natin. Yung una, ito pala is vector A. So, vector A pala ito siya. Yung pangalawa, vector B. So, vector B ito siya. Then, using that product for 3-dimensional since it involves X, Y, and Z. So, recall our equation. So, ito yung equation natin. Magnitude of A times magnitude of B cosine of their included angle is equals to AX BX. So, parang that product lang to sa X component plus the dot product of the Y components plus the dot product of the Z component. So, plug in values. We all know that A, magnitude value of A, remember, this is just the course resultant. Di ba, class? Resultant lang to sa um, component mo along x squared plus um, component mo along y squared plus component mo along z squared. Dito natin ha, kapag maka, if you met this uh, designation na meron siya yung uh, absolute value of a, therefore use talaga use automatic automatic the the Pythagorean. So, Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Um, Pythagorean theorem. So, parang ganun. Kasi, ano siya eh, it indicates the magnitude of your A. So, therefore, Pythagorean theorem. So, we have 3 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 1. Times, still, since yung B natin, it denotes the uh, absolute value or the magnitude of your vector B, which is our vector B is this one. So, therefore, apply pa rin yung Pythagorean theorem. So, we have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared times the cosine of theta. So, theta is our unknown here. Then, follow this sum um, formula, AX times BX. So, AX is 3 times BX1 plus A AY is negative 1 times BY which is 2 plus AZ is 1 then BZ is 2. So, we have here if you simplify far, further both sides of the equation, we have square root of 11 times square root of 9 cosine of theta, which is equal to 3 minus 2 plus 2. So, we have 3 na lang dito. Then, divided by square root of 11 and square root of 9. So, dito na siya. Ma, ano to siya dito? Malipat. So, we have a, uh, a cosine theta equivalent to 0 0.301511. So, ito na. Then, um take the arc cosine of 0.305511 so we have an angle of approximately 72.45 degrees so ito na sa 72.45 degrees na siya ito yung uh, final answer natin so medyo hindi siya makita so final answer theta is equals to uh, 72.45 degrees so ganun next how about this we have a vector force F is equal to 100 newtons acting on an object at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal creates a horizontal displacement of 3 meters. So, calculate the work done. So, let's have first the given. So, ganito pala klasa, since our previous examples wala siyang parang format. So, for me, uh, let's have a format. So, let's write the given first. So, ano ba talaga yung uh, anjan sa problem na yan? So, we have an applied force. So, we have applied force. So, sulat natin, applied force, which is equal to 100 newtons. Diba? 100 newtons. At, saan siya apply Siyempre, dun siya ina-apply dun sa, ano, sa moment arm. Oh, I mean, moment arm, dun sa object. So, sa given din pala, you must have an accompanied illustration. 
So, illustration natin ha. Meron tayong illustration kasi this is our guide. So, sabi na dito, acting of, of, of an object. So, let's say, meron tayong object na square. Then, meron tayong horizontal surface. Since, dyan naglay yung, ano natin, yung object natin na, na rectangle or prism. So, ganun. Tapos, sabi din na, daw niya, meron vector force that act on an object at an angle 30 degrees with the horizontal. So, meaning, we let this one as the uh, horizontal surface. So, horizontal surface. So, pasensya na class. Meron talagang boses ng babo at saka manok. Farm kasi dito eh. <laughs> so, here, draw the uh, force. So, force natin, F is equals to 100, uh, 100 newtons. Then, the angle with respect to the horizontal is 30 degrees. So, yan. Then, it displaces. So, meaning, meron pala tayong delta x that uh, dito. So, may displace siya. Yeah. And our delta x is equal to uh, 3 meters. So, so, 3 meters. Therefore, another given, we have uh, displacement. Displacement represented by delta x is equal to uh, 3 meters or simply write 3m then after given of course you need to write the uh, the uh, requirement or kung ano yung required so here uh, it state that calculate the work done so required mo is work done represented by ano mo siya w so here we now have the uh, solution uh, part. So, solution. So, ano bang formula ng work done? So, when we say work done, it is work done is equals to force acted um, parallel to your distance. So, meaning yung vector force mo pala, dapat act siya parallel to your um, to your displacement or in other um, notation, this is force times delta x force times delta x so since ano siya since dalawa siyang vector tas yung operation nila is multiplication therefore we can use the dot product so ano nga yung dot product ulit of course this is uh, equal to um, in our formula we have magnitude of a times magnitude of b cosine of their included angle so, for this case, this is equal to, sa problem natin, yung A natin, let's say A is our force F. How about the B? So, this is the displacement times the cosine of their included angle. Since yung included angle natin is, uh, since yung force natin is not parallel to our displacement, since naka-incline man siya ng 30 degrees, therefore, we need to uh, get the component of our force on the horizontal surface. So, ito pala. Therefore, by using this right triangle, so, ito pala is, is equal to F cosine 30. Diba? Itong component na to. So, this is F cosine of 30. So, therefore, meron tayo ditong cosine of theta. So, plug in the values. So, for our force, we have... 100 newtons so 100 newtons times our delta x we have 3 meters so 3 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees so if we are going to solve this so i type here 100 times uh, 3 times cosine of 30 so yung resulta niya is uh, 259 point 81 so this is approximation or approximate value lang 81 newton meter in other uh, units this is approximately equal to 259.81 joules diba joules J so ito yung pala yung work natin this is now our final answer for our work so don't forget sa work kasi 
yung gagamitin mo na operation kapag nag uh, solve ka ng ng work is yung that product if ever gali if ever kunyari yung force mo is let's say we have force here and then it is parallel to your displacement delta x therefore uh, based on your that product na equation work is equal to absolute value of f times absolute value of displacement cosine of theta diba if they are both parallel therefore yung angle dito is 0 degrees so we have f f times delta x then cosine of 0 degrees so ano ba yung um, I mean ah, sorry this is cosine 0 degrees so ano ba yung cosine 0 degrees so that is equal to 1 so meaning 1 lang pala to or just simply yung work pala siguro sa high school nyo is just force acted along the distance or force acted along a certain displacement so ganun, product siya <clears throat> so next, let's go to our uh, cross product so pag sinasabing uh, cross product class so ito yung <clears throat> ano, uh, vector vector product operation so vector product operation so ito, vector product operation meaning the uh, resulting um the resulting koan answer or yung result niya is a vector unlike for that product that it is in scalar so ano yung application dito you can apply it in solving uh, problems that has moments or torques ganun so ano but um ano pala yung cross product let's say we have here let's say we have a vector a so ito yung vector a and then we also have here um, sorry uh, medyo pangit vector b then both are separated by an angle theta so yung cross product pala is just the area of these vectors when projected so ano ba yung area ng dalawa so pro project mo lang let's say yung b project din natin dito sa part ng a so project natin equal ang dimension and then yung a then project mo din dito sa other sa other side so yung area ng parallelogram is already your cross product so yung cross product is de is denoted in this way uh, a cross b so therefore ano pala yung area dito so remember that your area here area ni mo dito is equal to the uh, area of area of a parallelogram kasi di ba naka parallelogram yan parallelogram so ganun so therefore sa area ng parallelogram so ito yung gagawin mo uh, you can multiply the base di ba recall the rectangle area of rectangle area of rectangle is just equal to base times height diba base times height lang o base times height ganun lang so, so ano yung base dito so we have base na B diba ito yung base so, ito yung base natin base B so we have base na B then times height anong height natin dito our height is not A Kasi diba A is inclined So therefore we need to have uh, a height that is uh, perpendicular to our base So therefore um, our height pala is this uh, perpendicular line So ito imaginary perpendicular line So we now create a right triangle at a theta So therefore by using the uh, trigonometric identity for right triangle The height here H is equal to a sine of theta pala. So, plug in plug this uh, value to here so we have the uh, area of a rectangle or which is equal to the area parallelogram 
which is equal to uh, B times area sine of theta. Therefore, A cross B pala, so i-link natin to A cross B is just equal to A B sine of theta. How about its, um, ano sir, how about its um, direction? So, yung direction, di ba? Yung direction pala ng cross product does not lie on the plane where the two vectors um, exist, yung A tsaka B. Hindi siya, hindi siya dito nag-lie ng plane. It is either out of the plane or into the plane. So, ganun. Parang upward tsaka downward. So, so, yun lang parang option niya. Up and down. So, ganun lang. Or away or into the page. So, for this, you can write here an n hat. So, paano mag, mag, ano, magdedetermine ng n hat? So, paano? Kasi, it will, uh, ano, uh, determine the direction. So, ito yung direction mo. Direction. <clears throat> so, for this, um, use, so, ay, sorry, um, So, um, itry natin, break natin. So, ito, na-erase pala. So, we have A, then B, then theta. Ito yung pinaproject natin. Kasi, di ba, parallelogram. So, R, A cross B pala is just the area of the parallelogram. And recall again that this is just the base B times the, uh, this height. Since our height is equal to a sine of theta. So, therefore, this is b a sine of theta. Then, I put here n hat. So, what uh, what is this n hat refers to? So, for the direction pala ng ating resultant is either out of the page. So, put here upwards or into the page or downward. So, the resultant does not lie on the plane where the vector A and B exist. So, paano yan? So, in order to uh, look for its direction, so, to solve for its direction, so, you are going to use, use the um, right hand rule. So, right hand rule. So, yung right hand rule? So, pag sinasabing um, A cross B, so, saan yung um, A mo? So, yung direction ng A mo is doon. So, sa, sa right mo is, yung A is andun pala siya sa, let's say, doon siya. Uh, ano natin na, ito is um, Y and ito is X. And then, itong up and down, Z to siya Z. So, yung A pala natin is andun sa Y. So, use your right hand. Use your right hand ba? Ha? Then, your... Um, Di ba nangunguna yung si A? So, si A... Since, siya nangunguna, so, you should uh, use the, ano, pointing finger. So, pointing finger mo para sa direction ng A. So, hindi mo siya pwede, ano, hindi mo siya pwede na i, ano yun? Hindi mo siya pwede na i-change. Like, naka straight lang siya. Like, ganito yung forma in order for you to, para may illustrate nyo. Diba, yung, yung thumb mo, ganun, tapos meron ka dito finger. It's either, it's either ito lang yung anuhin mo. So, diba naka ganun? O, diba naka ganun? So, ito yung thumb mo. Pasensya, ito yung thumb, tsaka Tsaka ito yung ano mo, um, yung pointing finger. So, pointing finger. Then, ito yung, ano mo, ito yung middle finger. So, wala na pala to. Parang, wala na. So, ito yung pointing finger, uh, ito yung middle finger. So, middle uh, finger. 
dapat ito lang talaga yung position mo so hindi, so, hindi pwede na ito si pointing finger magpo-point na siya dun sa left side dun talaga siya pa forward lang talaga so kapag kapag nangunguna pala si A so ito si A since si A is dun siya sa Y therefore yung orientation ng ng right hand mo is ganito na siya ganito siya yung thumb mo na down na siya then yung A mo as andun na tapos ito ni tapos ito yung ibang hand mo sorry ito yung thumb mo ha tapos yung B mo is andun parang dito gan ba so parang nakababa yung ano mo ito yung thumb mo so naka thumbs down then ito yung A mo A and then yung B so diba parang nagpa-follow lang siya so parang igagalan mo so ganoon pa rin A, Y, tas B, Y so therefore pala kapag nauna pala yung A cross B <coughs> so pag sinasabi palang A cross B which is equals to hmm, A, B sine of theta therefore pala ano pala to this is Um, since thumbs down man so into the page or into the plane into the plane I mean sorry this is um, B A sin theta kasi diba yung A sin theta pa ito pero kung kung B cross A so yung na nauna na si B <laughs> nauna si B ipoproject mo si B patungo dun para makuha mo naman tong H so therefore magiging ano natin siya magiging um, A B sine of theta so therefore magiging thumbs up na siya ba diba? thumbs up na so thumbs up so mag magta thumbs up na siya kasi ano eh <clears throat> um eh kasi mag ano na siya like um out of the page na siya kasi yung B natin is um siya na yun ang una so si siya yung maka-assign sa pointing finger then pwede mo pwede mo to siya i-rotate dun para mag na para mas same na siya dito then yung A mo is patungong Y so therefore thumbs up na then B cross A pala is out of the page out of the page then itong right hand rule pala you can use this during ano during opening of your bottle so diba kapag mag open ka ng bottle mo let's say we have a bottle here then meron siyang cup so diba nag apply ka ng force F which is uh, perpendicular to the uh, to the diameter of the cup and in the diameter or the radius pala sa cup yan na yung magiging another vector mo so therefore merong ka palang force cross R ba? Diba? force cross R ba? Diba? torque to kasi kapag mag open ka ng bottle naka generate ka ng uh, uh, torque na mag -ro rotate ng cup so therefore if you if you orient your cup on this uh, direction nagta thumbs up ka therefore during thumbs up so thumbs up yung cup mo cup will open diba kung thumbs down ka kung thumbs down ka meaning Uh, yung yung cup mo so cup will close o ba diba, maklose yung cup kasi on the other direction na use right hand rule so ganito mag apply ng right hand rule so therefore we have a property pala ng cross product so for uh, commutative property 
So, commutative property. Hindi siya mag apply Bakit? Kasi, iba pala yung A cross B not equal to uh, B cross A. Kasi, di ba? Bakit? Due to their direction. Iba yung direction nila. Meaning, they, are, they, they do not follow this commutative property. How about um, distributive property? So, uh, distributive property. Distributed. Distributive property. So, for distributive property, it is written this way. Um, A cross B plus C is just the same as um, A cross B plus A cross C. So, parang ganun lang, class. <clears throat> so, parang ganun lang. So, ano pala yung cross product na uh, pala is not the same as the dot product since dot product follows both commutative and distributive for the, for cross product lang is only distributed not commutative property so ganun lang ha and then for cross product also um you can uh we can have another representation especially if you are given and a vector along x y or even z so we have here we have uh, x then we have y and we have z let's say we have here a uh, a vector vector a and we also have a vector right here a vector b so, ganun. so for a vector a we have a component so a uh, ax plus by uh, by or j plus c i mean no no it's different it is ax plus ay plus az the same thing with our vector b for our vector b we, we also have bx plus uh, by plus uh, bz and then for that, we have um, A cross B. For A cross B, if you already have a background for your uh, matrix, this is how we are going to solve for this. So, mag matrix tayo kasi parang isa-isahin mo to dito eh. BX, AX, BX, AX, and then also, their, their ano, yung unit or directional unit nila so yung i j tsaka k kasi di ba sa x dun siya sa i sa y din dun siya sa j same through here i j k di ba so for a cross b use this ma uh, matrix on the first row write those uh, directional unit i j and k then on the second row write the components of the a so for a on i is x for A on J is Y. For K on A is Z. Then the third is your B. So, B on I is X. B on J is Y. And B on K is Z. So, the A cross B is just the determinant. So, the determinant, the determinant, I mean the determinant, Sorry, the determinant. So the, the determinant of the matrix of the matrix. So ganon lang determinant lang siya sa matrix. So in solving for the determinant, I use this uh, basket method. So for the basket method, you just uh, multiply this. So ito, ito yung una multiply this. So, follow me lang ha. You have AY times BZ times yung I. So, ito yung para sa I. Plus. So, ito. 
Next is ito na naman, Z, Z, A, Z times yung isa dito. Kasi dapat tatlohan to sila. Kasi diba, I, A, Y, B, Z, tatlo. So, J naman, J, A, Z. So, ipapartner mo siya dito sa B, sa B, uh, B, X. Therefore, you have um, A, Z times B, X, J. Then, plus pa rin. Kasi yung mga dun sa ano arrows patungo sa right plus sila mga plus yan sila then k how about for k since nag isa lang siya ipapartner mo siya sa dalawa dito so ganun lang so you have ax times by times k then for the next yung mga arrow na naman patungo dun sa right to ito ano na to? Ne negative. So, therefore, minus ay times bx. So, we have minus ay bx times k. So, k. Then, ito. Uh, axj, since dalawa na sila, partner mo lang sa bz. So, therefore, you have sorry, the, in, in, it's not plus, it's subtraction. So, ax times bz then j then lastly we have i times um, by times az so we have negative az times by times i then combine the same ano, the same directions so for i combine natin so therefore this is equal to combine yung i so we have um, a y b z minus a z b y times i then plus dun naman tayo sa j so we have a z times uh, b x minus a x b z times j so j so plus next one is for k so we have a x b y then minus a y b x for k so therefore ito na pala yung a cross b natin so ito na yung bago natin na vector, di ba? The resultant of the uh, cross product is a vector, not a scalar. So, therefore, ito na yun siya. And for its direction, so, alam mo na to dahil uh, meron ka ng directional units na I, J, K. So, if you graph it on the, uh, on the uh, 3D plane, so, so, malaman mo na yung uh, direction niya. So, let's have an example. We have a uh, vector force F is equal to 100 newtons is applied counterclockwise at an angle of 30 degrees relative to a moment arm of 2 meters from the axis of rotation. So, calculate the amount of torque generated and its direction. So, first, of course, we have the given. So, given muna tayo, class A, given. So, what are the given uh, values? So, we have a, uh, an applied force. Or this is a uh, moment force ni siya applied force F is equals to uh, 100 newtons. So, meron tayo 100 newtons. Then, sabi niya applied counterclockwise at an angle of 30 degrees. So, we have an angle of 30 degrees. So, don't worry. So, let na natin kasi we need to uh, illustrate this one in order for you to uh, visualize kung ano talaga yung nature ng um, nature ng problem. Then, Moment arm. So, we have a moment arm. Moment arm of uh, 2 meters. Moment arm of 2 meters. Then, ayun na. So, we have a required. Sabi dito daw, um, calculate the amount of torque generated in its direction. So, we need to calculate the torque and direction niya and its direction 
So, i-calculate din natin yung direction niya. So, to illustrate this, so we have an illustration. So, we have an illustration for you to uh, visualize kung ano talaga tong problem na to. So, apply daw siya sa moment arm and then nag-rotate siya from the axis of rotation. So, let's have here the axis of rotation. Then, we have a moment arm. So, ganun. ba Parang ganyan. This one right here is our axis of rotation. So, axis of rotation. Then, this is our moment arm measured. Ilan nga yun? 2 meters. So, therefore, 2 meters pala to yung moment arm natin. And then, we have a force that is applied counterclockwise. So, di ba yung counterclockwise natin pag sinasabing counterclockwise, ganito yung direction niya, di ba? Kasi yung movement ng orasan is ganito. Therefore, counter pa ganun. So, therefore, yung force natin is dito, hindi siya dun. So, force natin is um, F. So, ito. So, since ano siya? <clears throat> Um, since naka-inclined daw siya, so therefore, um, yung ano natin, naka-angle yung force. So, naka-angle siya into, so ano man yung angle niya, into 30 degrees. So, therefore, yung force F natin, ito F, meron siyang angle na theta which is equal to 30 degrees. So, ba Naka-angle siya. So, yung pag-apply niya dun sa tip, Ang moment arm is naka-angle siya 30 degrees. So, therefore, in order to solve this one, so, let's solve. We have a solution. So, since this is torque, you can use the cross product. So, therefore, our torque pala, so, torque is equals to the uh, force vector F cross the moment arm or delta X na lang to. Let's say M arm is just delta X. Force cross X. And remember, when you have a cross product, then you should, uh, the formula is the area of force and the displacement. So, pasensya naman class. Mino na namang mga manok dito. So, what is the, uh, the, the uh, area of force and displacement? So, we have F times delta x sine of theta. So, ano yung force natin? We have 100 newtons. So, 100 newtons times ano yung delta x natin? Okay, 2 meters. Then, we have sine of 30 degrees. Then, get your calculator para isolve natin to. So, I have here my calculator. We have 100 times 2 times sine of 30. So, we have an answer of um, 100 Newton meter. Hindi to siya equivalent sa joules kasi torque to eh. So, for its uh, direction. So, paano ba natin makukuha yung direction natin? ba right hand rule tayo. So, right hand rule. So, kung makikita mo sa right hand rule mo, ba? Um, mapapansin mo ito yung thumb mo tapos yung kamay mo parang nakaganon yan sila actually isa din yan sa mga ano isa din yan sa mga sa mga like basic tips yung pag curve ng ano mo curve ng right hand mo o yung mga daliri mo ba yung pag curve nya kung naka ano ka ba yung parang yung parang like you want to suntok other guy or other people so diba ganito parang you close your parang close your hand so ganito so diba yung parang direction ng uh, curvature ng uh, fingers mo is pa ganito so pa counterclockwise so kapag naka curvature yung hand mo pa counterclockwise yung direction ng thumb mo is pa itaas therefore upwards how about kung yung pag curve ng thumb mo is pa ano Kasi, di ba, counterclockwise. How about pa-clockwise lang? So, ganito yung magiging drawing niya. So, parang dito, 
Tapos nag thumbs down ka. Meaning nagta thumbs down ka. Kasi yung curvature mo naman yan is pagano na, di ba? Opposite siya. I mean, ganito, di ba? So counterclockwise therefore downwards. Or downward. Hmm. Downward yung ano mo dito, downward. So therefore, for this since it is in counterclockwise, therefore yung direction ng torque mo pala is upwards or um away from the page so away from the page from the I mean not the page away from the axis or from the plane the plane of rotation or upward so ganun lang Ganun lang pag ano ng direction for cross products. You must use your right hand. So, you must use your right hand. So, ganun. You must use your right hand with class. Use your right hand. Okay? And I think that's all um, for today for vectors. So, thank you for listening.